Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection in beautiful downtown Salty, Nacoochee, Georgia. So good to see you all here. You are seating toward the front. You're kind of discombobulating me here. Most, <laughs> the back is empty. I, I, I just don't know what's going on. But it's so good to have you all here on this morning. Um, I want to mention that today is an anniversary for the people of Resurrection Episcopal Church. It is on this day, 28 years ago in 1993, when the worshiping community of Resurrection Episcopal Church had their first service in the White County Courthouse. So congratulations on you who were here. Give them all a hand. Yes. Congratulations to those of you who were at that service. Um, it is a moment in time that we did not want to miss. Um, you are here on a special day today because we begin our June lay preaching series, um, which we have done for many, many years now. And we begin this Sunday with Becky Schock. She will be our preacher today. And then next week will be Larry Holbrook and then Kevin Murray the week after that. And so please uh, give them your full attention and support, which I know that you will. Also, we're going to have a cleanup day this coming Saturday, beginning at 10 o'clock. Denise Dorsey, do you want to say something about that? Well, right now, some of the things that I know that need to be done is ruin outdoor topics. <laughs> outdoor topics. Outdoor topics. Outdoor topics. Outdoor topics. Okay, so that's Saturday at 10 o'clock. We would love to see you all here helping out. Also, uh, the Salty Nacucci Community Association has asked, asked me to announce that on Saturday the 19th and Sunday the 20th, they will be having a weekend celebration of Juneteenth. It is on June 19th, 1865 that the slaves were legally freed, and so there will be uh, tours of the slave cabin, and there will be Afri African-American art and music, and so please consider joining in the festivities uh, on Saturday the 19th and Sunday the 20th. Also, in a couple of pastor care notes, Kenny Brevard, we're continuing to pray for him. As you know, he continues to remain in Emory Hospital. Um, Two weeks ago now, they put a mechanical device on the left side and the right side of his heart because his heart got so weak that, it, that you know, he's on the transplant list that they were um, uh, concerned that he might not even be able to make it uh, to another heart, so they put those mechanical devices in. They, um, he is still trying to recover from having those put in which means he's off of the transplant list for a while until he can get better. And then once he gets better and are able to remove those mechanical de devices, then he will go back on the highest priority of the heart transplant list. So he still has a very, very long way to go. And so please continue to keep the Brevard family in your prayers. And there is a box out there. And so if you would like to help support the family, you can put a check, a mark for them, or cash or a gift card in that box uh, to help support the Brevard family. Also, Jack Prince continues and remains in hospice care, getting weaker and weaker each week. Please continue to keep Jack in your prayers and his daughter Becky uh, Burnett, who has uh, breast cancer. Uh, keep them in your prayers. Dottie Barton Werper had surgery this past Wednesday on her uh, shoulder. And as you know, those of you that have had that shoulder surgery recovery really takes a long, long time. And so please continue to keep her in your prayers. And it's good to see Larry Rowland back in with us today, looking all good and healthy. And so welcome back, Larry. Are there any other announcements that we need to make? Mary Goddell. Thank you. 
And now let us prepare ourselves to actively participate in the liturgy.
Our service continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or in your service bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things proceed, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your mercy, guiding, may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. <clears throat> All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us, uh, like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel and they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel pr prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then listen to their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers he will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one tenth of your gain of your grain and <laughs> vineyards and give it to his officers and courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to, listen, to have a king over us so that we may also be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, come, let us go to Gilgal and, there, and there, then renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal and they, there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 138, found on page 793 of the Book of Common Prayer, or in your service bulletin. Let us pray this psalm by half verse. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. 
for you have glorified your name. And your word of all things. When I called, you answered me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth, they will sing of the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He pursues the body from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not what it can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul. And by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mothers and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, 
Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning, everyone. When you drive south from Cleveland on 129 and you get into the Gainesville city limit, you pass the house I lived in the first 10 years of my life. And if you travel back north a few blocks, you will find Riverbend Baptist Church, which came into existence about the same time I did. We grew up together the church and I. When I was four years old, our pastor unexpectedly died, and that's one of my earliest memories of going to his house and seeing the grieving mother with her four young children. When I was five, my grandmother, who lived across the street from Riverbend Church, let me go across and sit in the sanctuary and watch uh, a couple from Italy paint the scene around the baptismal pool. And I was fascinated. To this day, when I think about heaven, I imagine myself lying on my back in that grassy meadow beside the river that flows into the baptismal pool. We got a new pastor, and when I was seven, he started hounding me to join the church. Now, I was very shy, and I didn't say this, but I thought, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. This is my church. I was here before you came, and I'll be here when you leave. <laughs> but he wouldn't leave me alone. Don't you want to be a child of God? I am a child of God. I came from God. I don't know what you're talking about. But finally, to get him on my back, the shy little seven-year-old walked down that aisle. I don't think I said a word. I just nodded to his questions. Do you take Jesus as your personal savior? Do you believe your sins have been forgiven? And so a few weeks later, I was baptized, and all of that was taken care of. When I was 15, I became pianist for the youth choir, and I served that church for 20 years in every capacity that a woman could serve in a Baptist church. I became the church pianist. But I had trouble with what I was taught. I couldn't accept the incongruence between these statements. God is love. God created everybody, God created everything, and yet there are people in other countries who are faithful and devout and loving good people who uh, are affiliated with religions older than Christianity, and yet they're doomed to hell because they haven't had the advantage I've had of being taught about Jesus every week. Didn't make sense to me. As a young child, I figured out that the way to be loved and to receive approval was to be as perfect as I could possibly be. That was reinforced by things like making a B instead of an A on my report card 
or speaking when I was expected to remain silent. I experienced what I later called conditional love. When I was 15, I met my first love. Greg was the kindest, most devout Christian boy I had ever met. And we fell in love and we planned our future. And we were both devout Christians and we were both faithful and we would read the Bible together and we thought our future was set. But in the summer before our senior year, Greg was diagnosed with terminal cancer. He was taken to Emory, the surgeons opened him up and sewed him back and said, there's nothing we can do. It was devastating. He slowly grew to where he was immobile. He was in and out of the hospital. He couldn't go to school. It was hard for us to date, hard for us to see each other. And his mother said, Becky, it is not your place to go on this journey with Greg. It's my place. You must get on with your life. I often thought Greg was too gentle to walk among wolves. For him, it was glory to go on to heaven. With the help of my youth leader and some of my friends, I was able to move on. And move on I did in high gear, and it didn't stop. I graduated from high school, I started college, I earned a bachelor's degree, I got married, I started my teaching career, and I got pregnant all before my 21st birthday. And it didn't stop. It took becoming a mother for me to understand unconditional love. I, I love my children unconditionally but I didn't feel loved unconditionally. And so I kept pursuing excellence. One degree after another, one accomplishment after another, serving my family, my church, my profession, my community, until all those years just bled into nothingness like ink and water. Then I met Hans. He spoke at one of my graduate classes. Two years passed. On rare occasions, we might see each other at a professional meeting. And then one evening, we attended a meeting in Gainesville, and we happened to walk out of the building at the same time. So we walked toward our cars, just carrying on a casual conversation. I'd never really had a conversation with him before. As we approached my car, we turned to say goodbye. And when we looked at each other, silence and solemnity fell over us. There's, there's no language that's adequate to articulate what we experienced, but it was as if our souls recognized each other from another time from another dimension. It was a transcendent experience, one I'd never had before, have never had since. It was mutual. I don't know how long it lasted, whether it was seconds or minutes. But when we came out of it, it was like coming out of a trance. And we were just looking at each other Nobody said anything. And finally, Hans said goodbye, and he turned and walked to his car. I learned later that Hans drove around for hours trying to figure out what we experienced. I went home and could not sleep. I called my sister late at night and tried to explain the unexplainable. Two years passed. 
If we saw each other, it was simply a greeting, but we never talked about it until we were both invited to the Governor's Conference on Education. And Hans saw me at that meeting, and he came toward me. I had never seen him this way, never since have seen him this way. He was nervous, he was perspiring, and he said, can we talk? So we sat down at a table and he said, do you remember that night? Over the next eight years, time, circumstances, opportunities, and yes, our own choices brought us together more and more. Hans offered me a job as an investigator with the State of Georgia Professional Practices Commission. He was the executive director. And so he became my boss and my greatest teacher. But I never imagined that our relationship could be anything more than that. There was no way I could divorce. That was the unpardonable. I could not do that to my children. My dilemma was so great that I decided I didn't know what else I could do but just end my life. And so one afternoon, I drove to an isolated cove on Lake Lanier. I took off my shoes, I took off my jewelry, and I walked to the water's edge. I thought, I came from water, I will return in water. And then a thought came to me that I didn't generate that said, do you really think your children are better off with you dead than divorced? I had to think about it. And then the image of someone going, telling my children, your mother has taken her own life. I couldn't bear that. So I turned around. There are some words that once spoken will split the world into. I want to divorce did just that. The reactions, the repercussions, the consequences, theretofore had been unimaginable to me, incomprehensible. And they sent me into a traumatized catatonic state. It took days before a neighbor convinced my family to get me to the hospital. I don't remember much about my time in the hospital, but I do remember asking for my pastor. He refused to come, as did my mother and my Baptist preacher brother. It was interesting in the scripture today, when Jesus was in trouble, his mother and his brothers came. That didn't happen for me. Only my sister flew from California, she and her husband, and she was there with me in the hospital and stayed until I could get settled. I counted on one hand the friends who stood by me. You see, in the eyes of my church, my family, my community, I was the Hester Prynne of Hawthorne's infamous novel. But through it all, I never felt abandoned by God. The psychiatrist later told me when he first saw me in the hospital, I was lying face down on a stretcher. And he came and introduced himself and he said, the first thing I said was, are you a Christian? The following year, Hans and I married, and it was Hans through whom I received that unconditional love. He adored me at my best and my worst. I was precious to him. He believed in me. He raised me up, just like those song lyrics. He raised me to more than I ever thought I could be. I know beyond any of doubt, we were destined to be together. 
Those of you who knew us well, you know our souls were knitted. We were one. Throughout our 32 years of marriage, our love, our friends, our faith, and most of all, our God brought us through difficult times. The suicide of Hans's oldest son, the addiction of our daughter to drugs, Hans's three bouts with cancer, and then his final year in hospice, a sacred year, a gift of time we had to adjust to the fact that we would not have each other's physical presence. He is forever mine a geliebter man, my beloved man. I want to end with a story that I tell especially for Father Scott. In 1985, after I got out of the hospital and got some strength back, I felt compelled to address the deacons and the pastor of River Bend Baptist Church. And so I wrote a letter requesting a meeting with them. I don't know how I had the strength to do that. They convened a meeting to vote on whether or not to meet with me. But the motion passed, and so they set a date and a time. So I met with them of all places in the choir room where I had spent many, many hours. The pastor had written rules of engagement on the board. So there I sat with 10 men, deacons, and the pastor, 11. I remember the first thing I said, and I remember the last thing I said. I don't remember what came in between. Those words were provided for me from another source. But the first thing I said was, I have been in this church my entire life. I have served this church my entire adult life. And I experienced the most traumatic experience of my life. And I needed your love, not your approval, just your love. But you judged me, condemned me, and abandoned me in one fell swoop. And you never said one word to me. I am here to say, please don't ever do that to anybody else, regardless of their sins. And the last thing I said was, one day, my life will glorify God. Last December, when Father Scott presented the resurrection cross to me, I was deeply moved, for more reasons than you know, because that statement came back to me. And I thought, maybe now, in some small way, my life glorifies God. To God be all the glory and honor. Amen. 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 Now, standing as you are able, let us join with Christians throughout time and across the world on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. Let us say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man.
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our Lord will seem find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, including Pam Gaines. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those in our parish with immediate needs, including Kenny Brevard, Jack Prince, Dottie Barden Werper, Jan Kay, and Larry Rowland. We pray for those with long-term needs, including Carol Prescott, Helen Shafflin, Kelly Smith, Lloyd Mills, Gil Pollitt, Jennifer Smith, Kevin LaForce, and Chris Guidel. We also pray for families and friends of our parish, including Jackie, Lucy, Billy, Gordon Weatherby, Scott Cassavant, Richard Turner, Teddy Thompson, Denise Bridges, Gina Pritchett, Betty Wilman, Cheston Kimsey, and Becky Burnett. We pray for pregnant mothers, including Katie Rose Ledford, Ashlyn Carver, Hear us, Lord. Please be seated. Is anyone celebrating a birthday that would like to stand for a birthday blessing this week? Or an anniversary for an anniversary blessing? Paul and Cynthia, please come forward. So you are that June couple, huh? <laughs> One of many. One of many. How many years, Paul? 43 years. Excellent, excellent. You may take each other's hand. Let us pray. Heavenly God, we thank you for your continued blessing on this union that has enabled them to reach 43 years. And we thank you for allowing their love to deepen and for helping them through times of trial. And we ask that you would continue to watch over them and their home and their family and help them to renew their vows of love and loyalty to each other and remain united to you, steadfast in your faith and in your service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Congratulations, Thank my you. friends. Congratulations. Aww.
Let us pray. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now continue on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now standing and greeting each other in the name of Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, my friend. Good job. Good job. After you have shared the peace with each other, you may be seated. Denise has something to say. Serving lunch. Denise said. She said for Saturday work day, they're also serving lunch as well. That'll bring them in every time. Again, I want to welcome you to church this morning. It's so good to see all of you here, see all of your, see all of your smiling faces and everything. I am so thankful uh, that you are here. I am also thankful to Becky Shaw again for... It seems like we say that each and every week, but we're continually thankful for the ministry of Becky Shock and her willingness to be vulnerable and get up here and, and share her faith story as difficult as it was for her. I, I know that she was quite anxious uh, before today, uh, but we are thankful that she was, was honest with, with the people that she loves and the people that love her to be able to share what her life has been like through her journey. As I told uh, Becky before, I remember after I first got ordained and I had to make my first presentation, I was anxious and I was nervous that I was gonna screw up. And the priest that I was talking with said, what are you so anxious for? And I said, well, what if I screw up? And he said, well, so what if you do? What a better group to screw up in front of. <laughs> because they all love you anyway, no matter what's gonna happen. And so. Her willingness to be that vulnerable uh, in front of us, I hope that she felt your love and that you felt her, her trust in you with her story. And so thank you, Becky, for that. And also, uh, gee, we're going to have a, a solo for the first time in over a year. And Miss Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you for, for be willing to do that. Thank you so much. 
Now, this is the communion portion of our service, and I just want to uh, be clear that in the Episcopal Church, we truly believe that this altar is God's family table and not just ours alone. And so you are encouraged and you are invited to join us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, regardless of which denomination you are from. Now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels 
and with all the company of heaven who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the bread of heaven the body of Christ 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 the bread of heaven the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. And seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. And strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.